Yo! What's going on? We are privileged to live another day in this magnificent world. I was just saying, Antonio, it's 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 uh, perfect timing that Napoleon Ridley Scott's Napoleon is coming out this week. I I, I read the review, dude. It got totally cucked and wokeified. It's gonna be horrible. I'm on my gladiator high, and I'm not gonna have the same. I'm I'm going to like the debut screening at 3 p.m. at the IMAX on Tuesday, and yeah. I'm I'm going in with a lot of hope, but. Hope is a shitty hedge, as as we used to say. I'm not sure what I'm walking into. What do you think? Yeah, I, I think that the inert early signs seem like it's going to be bad. But uh, there's always the hope that Ridley Scott has a director's cut that comes out a couple of years later that actually makes it good, which Kingdom of Heaven is a movie I, I think is great. And if you actually watch the director's cut, you're like, oh, wow, this is awesome. So maybe, maybe there's some uh, cutting room floor scenes that will will help redeem it. Is he going to cut out the scene where they fire cannons at the pyramids, which is totally historical? <laughs> is, that, is that one staying in? <laughs> I understand that's actually in there. The scene yeah. that I want to see is the one that you tweeted, the uh, Napoleon arriving back from Elba. Yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, having the, the guys drop their guns and, you know, say, be the emperor, right? Got, got to meme that one, putting Sam Altman's face on it. And yeah. like... The whole cast and crew, <laughs> the rest on the rest, yeah. 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 Well, I mean, look, it's interesting. The thing that came to mind was, uh, and you should tell the story, but on Friday with this whole, you know, the blog post and then the people coming out. Sorry, got to go with the 10 IQ points, 10, 10 more IQ points now. Go ahead. Sorry. Yeah. So so, <laughs> so give me the uh, the Antonio, what is it, pronunciamento or? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that was Friday. It was just like you, you saw the, the guns coming out very fast. Yeah, yeah. So, pronunciamiento. So, you know, I have to say Hispanic culture. I can say this. This is the Latinx podcast, so we can say this. You know, Latin Americans are just better at coups. I think there's certain races, Russians, Latin Americans. We're just, we're just better at this. Sorry. Um, you should just outsource it to us, frankly. And so this whole pronunciamiento business is like a real thing. And it used to be pretty common in, in Iberia, Spain, Portugal, and Latin America, whereby, you know, coups are like a professional thing. It, it's, it's a, it's a, it's almost a, a democratic act in that. Some contingent of the military rebels against a legally elected, uh, you know, or whatever, duly elected leader. And then there's a pronunciamiento in which every major element of society, the church, other generals, the Senate, whatever, comes out either for or against the coup. And it's kind of a, a straw vote, no confidence vote thing. And enough come out for the splinter faction, the coup wins. And it actually, often it can be kind of bloodless in that everyone, you know, the main government kind of gives up and says, okay, well, clearly we lost support of the of, of most of the elements of society. And so, it, it, yeah, this is the sort of thing where there's like a coup, but then, you know, like Napoleon coming back from Elba, it's like, well, <laughs> you know, I guess the CTO bailed and <laughs> said, no, I'm going on this guy's side. Microsoft, well, no, nobody did it publicly, but I'm sure they can said like, what are you doing? And uh, yeah, what's your guys' take? Yeah, I, I, I think... The best take came from one of the group chats. Someone said something of like, you're, you're dealing with one of the most sophisticated actors in Silicon Valley. Like Paul Graham came out today and said, Sam is the best in the world at this, which maybe is a little extreme, but, but really like someone who ran YC has been involved in a bunch of messy situations, whether advising or, or himself. And, you know, obviously has had this really complex legal structure, open AI, converting from this nonprofit to this cap profit and, you know, these crazy negotiated deals with Microsoft and to think he would be blindsided, taken out um, by a board of kind of like two NPCs. And, and, you know, you know, Adam D'Angelo is a sophisticated actor. He's been around in Silicon Valley a long time, but this Ilya guy doesn't seem like he he's kind of the, conniving Machiavellian. I mean, maybe it really is the, the Occam razor here of like, they are true believers. This is like an EA coup. But I, I kind of went from, originally I saw the, the drop for the blog post and it was like, okay, this smells like malfeasance. And whether it was kind of a me too thing or financial, that that's where I was leaning. And then, cause you had all these, these really well-regarded people in Silicon Valley kind of lining up the wagons behind Sam, Brian Chesky, I think being the, the biggest, and kind of almost seeming like it was orchestrated, I was like, oh, well, maybe, maybe this actually is as dumb. I mean, Eric, I give you credit. Like, you're like, could this be an EA coup? And I was like, that's so stupid. There's no way that that could actually be the case. And then by the end of Friday night, I'm like, damn, I'm Team Sama. Like, you know, fuck the D-cells. Like, let's, 
let's uh, let's charge ahead. And then now I, I feel like there's a lot of messiness going on. So we'll we'll see where we end up this week. But I imagine I have to imagine this is just going to kick up so much dust that now the IRS is going to get involved. I think someone smart mentioned that you know when you're dealing with Delaware C corps. The SEC and is is kind of the regulator. Even if you're a private company, like investors and 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 like all the laws are relevant around, like you know, SEC. But in the case of nonprofits, it's the IRS. And when you kick up the IRS and and potentially a like, did you actually convert this from nonprofit to cap profit? Was that actually legal? I don't know. I, I think there's going to be a lot of fallout from this, regardless of whether Sam ends up back or not. I, it's funny that it's going to be like an EA versus EAC face-off. This is like the Guelphs and the Ghibellines in Florentine politics, not the modern version of it. And by the way, it doesn't surprise me at all that you see a crowd of people coming out uh, stumping sort of for Sam. He's done a lot of favors for lots of people, including me. Those who read Chaos Monkeys might recall. It's funny. I was going to post a passage of it, but then everything got too simpy, so I, I kind of got the ick. <laughs> but I was going to I was going to post a passage. Uh, he did he did save our ass actually. Um, so in, in, in I, I went back and reread it. So in Chaos Monkeys, um, it's a long story for those who read it, you know, tiny little YC company. We got maliciously sued by a previous employer. It's a big company with tens of millions of dollars. And we were like, shit, we we're personally named in a lawsuit. We were young and naive. We thought the world's going to end. And Sam just showed up like, what was it, Mr. Wolf in Pulp Fiction or whatever, and just like cleaned up the whole fucking situation and said, yeah, 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 I'll make some phone calls. <laughs> okay. <laughs> like, I don't know what horse's head appeared in what bed. But basically, Microsoft told Adkami, the company at the time that now is ancient history, like, you can't be suing little companies. This is going to wreck our deal. Like, go fix it. And then instantly the lawsuit just evaporated and gone. And Sam, and Sam was like, oh, yeah, great. Thanks. And just went on to the next thing. Right. I think he's done that a lot. And so that's why you're seeing a lot of the you know people coming out for him, I think. Yeah. And look, I, I think people privately have grumbled about Sam for a while and the variety of different complaints. But I think when you you've banked that much goodwill with that many powerful people. And and these are people sharing anecdotes like that, where, you know, Sam, Sam went to bat for me, Sam, Sam, you know, kind of uh, went on all in on it. And, and it's like, you just basically had all of the, the like good people in Silicon Valley for the most part were on your side. That shows you how sophisticated he is in terms of like, he, he's been playing the long game in, in Silicon Valley and, and the network is everything. Right. So I, I, I just have to, uh, yeah, I guess it's either as dumb as like an EA true believer, like really, uh, you know, basically religious fundamentalists who are running, you know, open AI's board because they really believe in this this AI God that they think that they're creating. Right. And we've talked about this in the past or there's there's some other story here. Right. And and. Uh, yeah, I, I'd be curious to see where we are a week from now in terms of like what comes out, but. I have to, if I have to make like one bet is I, I actually do think it's, it's like EA fanatics who've, who've now flipped. And I think that they're quickly realizing that maybe not as many people who had joined open AI, maybe the early people, but like the people who've joined since it's been in the hype cycle are there to make money and not actually there for the, the noble mission of AGI. So. So one weird thing that I've never understood, and I, and I obviously, you know, I'm not VC enough to I'm gonna understand these machinations. How did it go from like a, nonprofit foundation thing to this for-profit thing? And how does Sam not own any of it, right? To me, it's kind of the looming questions that I've never gotten a good answer for and I don't understand. Does anyone understand that? Or is that just one of the mysteries of the universe? I don't, I don't think anyone has figured that out. Uh, <laughs> okay. He testified before Congress that he doesn't own any equity. So that, that's a pretty big step. And that was like a very clear answer. I think it was uh, Senator Kennedy from Louisiana had that kind of you know, fun little line. And then he, he was just very clear, I don't own any equity. Um, David Sachs, I think has had the best theory and, and you can think of him from kind of like both, he's been on a lot of boards and, and just seen a lot of legal structures and, and a lawyer in a former life where his, his theory is that maybe Sam is actually the ultimate control of the foundation, which I'm, I'm just kind of parroting it back, but more or less, there's a cap profit company that the current employees can make money on the equity, you know, this tender offer that was in theory, going to go through with Thrive at like 90 billion or 95 billion. That that's like part of this for you know cap profit company. Microsoft gets back their investment, and then at the end of the day, there's a limit on how much money can be made by OpenAI, the for profit entity, and then the remainder, and then all the IP associated with that, 
falls back to the, the foundation. And so then the question is, who, who is the ultimate beneficiary of the foundation in terms of control, right? Because even though you can't go spend the money, right? Let, let, let's say OpenAI ends up being a trillion dollar company. And this foundation is, you know, beyond that cap profit structure is the ultimate beneficiary of it. You can do a lot of influence with a trillion dollar company, especially one that doesn't have to pay taxes, right? And, and, and so, yes, you can't go buy, uh, you know, a mansion in Malibu, but you can use it for political purposes in terms of like kind of uh, furthering whatever agenda you think is possible. And then I think this is the the other element, which now is starting to click in and, and maybe actually one of the reasons that it came out, I think, in a couple of reports is that Sam might not own any equity in OpenAI, but he's the CEO of OpenAI. And as a result is is getting involved in a bunch of other companies, which is legal, right? And I think maybe that that's the issue, but it's like there there's this rumor that he's trying to start an NVIDIA competitor. Um, there's one where it's like working with Johnny Ive to create an iPhone competitor that's you know AI driven. Obviously, he has, uh, you know, he's an investor in Humane and, and some of these other kind of AI forward companies. Um, and then, so, so I think, I think that there could be actually a real situation where he really has no beneficiary equity and, and he's not, there's no lying and no equivocation there. But I, I think it's easy to say, I don't own any equity directly and then maybe have a kind of future beneficiary to that. But again, I think all this is just going to come out now, like before it was kind of, I, I, there's too much noise and too much smoke that's been kicked up by it that I think the the IRS has to kind of get involved, right? And the other thing is he was extremely savvy, right? Like he, he was the one going to Washington early on, going to Congress early on, asking for regulation. He's, he, you know, I think he went to a Biden fundraiser dinner at the White House or, you know, there's a photo of him. So he, he's well uh, connected within the existing administration. But I think in a world where you potentially have a different administration next year and or this is just enough egg on people's faces that people are now going to put some scrutiny on this structure, we, we may learn a little bit more. Elon is pissed about this. He's, he said it on Twitter and he's like, what happened to the 100 million I gave? Now there's an accusation that Elon actually didn't give the full 100 million. Again, I, I have no idea on the, on the details, but um, and then Elon actually just tweeted today. I don't know if you guys saw it. He said that X Corp. Um, you know, the parent company for now Twitter, those investors own 25% of XAI. So uh, sweetening sweetening the deal on something where he's already cut the value of Twitter down, you know, it's still probably inflated, but it's like a $20 billion valuation now. Um, but he's now giving them the the future upside of of their AI. And, and I don't know, have you guys played around with Grok? No. It's, it's actually pretty good. Like you can actually ask Grok, like is Sam Altman the CEO of OpenAI? And it uses Twitter's live data to then actually make a determination where, you know, ChatGPT for a while was trained on the last cutoff was 2021. And then more recently it's updated to April, 2023. But so, I mean, and it's got a sense of humor and, and things like that. So I think it's a long way away from, you know, the lead that OpenAI has, but in a world where OpenAI loses Sam and Greg and they have to go start a new thing, it's like, I think it's fair game for, for Elon. And this opening, I think, reminds me of talking to crypto companies, Dan, and it's like, there's a foundation, and then there's the dev corp, and then there's the DAO, and then there's a the token. It's like, you're in the meeting, it's like, who am I talking to right now? Can you just point to me on the diagram? <laughs> what part of the company am I talking to right now? And it's like, man, what a, what a mess. Yeah, and, and I think like a lot of this is like all these, these shell games only work if no one actually really investigates or really pushes right. you to a, a court, because I think at a certain point, it ends up being facts and circumstances and a judge... <laughs> Like, you know, I, I think one thing I've learned about like these like tax and, and legal, uh, it's, it's you never get like 10 commandments coming down from, right. you know, Mount Sinai and be like, here's the exact structure. All of it is actually it's, it's legal precedent as a result of people suing, you know, each other or, or the government suing you and Delaware Chancery Court. And, and, and that's why all these legal agreements are so long. It's, it's every time there's in exception case, they, they add it to the boilerplate because there was a the law case that, you know, went against the company. And so, um, yeah, I, I think novel legal structures always present some risk when they hit contact with like a determined regulator or a determined, you know, federal prosecutor. You mean uh, no one's going to be able to do the Peter Thiel trick of putting billions of dollars into a 401k and then profiting off of it <laughs> tax-free? Gonna guess yeah. they're gonna probably put a max on the 401k next time. <laughs> 
which he learned from who? Sam Bankman Fried's father, who was a tax lawyer at Stanford, and he actually uttered in one of his classes, one of the one of the stranger loops in our in our current zeitgeist. You guys knew this, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, we'll continue our interview in a moment after a word from our sponsors. Real quick, what's the easiest choice you can make? Taking the window instead of the middle seat, outsourcing business tasks that you absolutely hate. What about selling with Shopify? Shopify is the global commerce platform that helps you sell at every stage of your business. Shopify powers 10% of all e-commerce in the US. And Shopify is the global force behind Allbirds, Rothy's, and Brooklinen, and millions of other entrepreneurs of every size across 175 countries. Whether you're selling security systems or marketing memory modules, Shopify helps you sell everywhere, from their all-in-one e-commerce platform to their in-person POS system. Wherever and whatever you're selling, Shopify's got you covered. I've used it in the past at the companies I've founded, and when we launch merch here at Turpentine, Shopify will be our go-to. Shopify helps turn browsers into buyers with the internet's best converting checkout, up to 36% better compared to other leading commerce platforms. And Shopify helps you sell more with less effort thanks to Shopify Magic, your AI-powered all-star. With Shopify Magic, whip up captivating content that converts from blog posts to product descriptions. Generate instant FAQ answers. Pick the perfect email send time. Plus, Shopify Magic is free for every Shopify seller. Businesses that grow, grow with Shopify. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash moment of zen. Go to shopify.com slash moment of zen now to grow your business no matter what stage you're in. Shopify.com slash moment of zen. It is interesting because when something like this happens to Sam Altman, the, the worst case scenario is, is SBF course. Um, and it is interesting how SBF also tried to sort of capture the regulators before he went down, you know, and, and almost got away with it, perhaps, um, to sort of, you know, favor uh, FTX. And the best case, of course, is is Steve Jobs, which seems like it is possible that he's set up to speed run that, um, that path. And, and I just want to comment, yeah, how masterful this transition in PR has been over the past 36 hours, where initially, it seemed like closer to the SBF side, like people really suspected either fraud or, you know, uh, self-dealing or some sexual thing, um, something really bad uh, because the, the the language that came out. And then within 12 hours, uh, I don't know if, if if he was doing this or just emergent, the, the narrative shifted to, hey, this is an EA coup, even though he was in favor of regulation, you know, trying to do regulatory capture or, or so it seems. But the EAC, the whole EAC movement got behind him. You know, everyone's switching to Team Sama. You know, OpenAI employees coming out with hearts. Uh, you know, in, in support of Sam and the board Things is just cringe. Things got cringe. That's yeah, the problem with Zoomer culture. Things just get cringe really quick. The, the whole like, valley. Did, did we have to do the hearts. I mean, come on, hearts. Zoomer, like, Zoomer pronunciamento a little less. Dude, uh, we, yeah. we were we were we were citing you know Napoleon metaphors, and now we're like citing Mean Girl metaphors because you didn't return my heart emoji. Like, things just degenerated really really quickly. <laughs> Sam has won the PR, like all journalists, you, uh, like they're putting pressure on the board. Because he's resign. much better at this. I mean, yeah. a, I mean, I, I would reject the SBF analogy. Because SBF actually created, you know, he actually did actual fraud. And I don't think anyone even remotely accuses Sam of that. I don't think he would, would do it. Um, also, Sam is just like a lot better at this. Like I, I've seen him work, right? Like, yeah, Sam is amazing. I, I was kind of in his orbit. I think we should follow. Like he, he's much better at this game. <laughs> Then I suspect SBF as a way. He's an amazing operator within that ecosystem, right? And it's clear that he's shaping the narrative, as he should, right? Because when you get fired, I have a little bit of a experience here. The company always tries to allege that you did the worst thing in the book. And the only answer, if you didn't, is like, well, that's defamatory. Yeah. Fuck you, prove it. And then suddenly the company's like, oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. We didn't quite mean what we said in the thing, right? And so that that's how this that's how this works. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, you know you're dealing with like top tier talent in, in, in this yeah. arena. Kara Swisher's coming out of like, she doesn't report anymore. And she, she's, yeah. she's doing the reporting and, and like the story is coming out from her, from her, her platform. Um, by the way, the, the best part about this is all the journalists are, are on X, like, cause yeah. none of this, like I, I, yeah. on threads, uh, you know, they're still doing dev day for, for open AI. It's like, two weeks <laughs> like they, they don't even know that Sam is actually CEO, but it's because he hasn't been fired yet on, on threads. Um, whereas like, obviously this is all real time on X. Like, you know, Martin Charlie is, is like getting the inside scoop of, of employees last night about this supposed, and we didn't even talk about this. So, you know, Obviously, yesterday, this whole story around that they're now negotiating to have him back. People are thinking, okay, this is the investors plus Microsoft. They're like, no, 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 like you, you need to 
you know, bring him back. But my, my sense is that it's probably the employees. And, and so this, this rumor seems credible is that a bunch of employees said, hey, we're going to resign at 5 p.m. today, Pacific, uh, you know, yesterday, um, Saturday, if you do not, um, if you don't bring Sam back. And OpenAI without that kind of core group of talent, okay. So it's like you have an LLM that's a little ahead, but you're you're certainly not going to get to chat GPT-5. Um, and so I think the that is the the crux of it is the ability to pull the the most talented people out of the organization um and you quickly realize i mean anyone who's been at any like high growth startup knows that there's a there's a core group of people that actually make the startup what it is and there's a bunch of people who show up and yeah they're contributing but the, the, their, their impact is is far you know i think keith Brevoy refers to this as like um rifles versus ammunition and it's like i think sam has all the rifles ready to go to whatever nuco and I think the current board, you know, mostly probably Ilya, who's who's kind of uh, he's a co-founder, right? I think maybe realized they overplayed their hand in that regard. Um, and Sam would totally do that. He would totally flip it around into a like double-digit billion-dollar raise, like three days later. <laughs> it's like a power move, and he would pull it off, and everyone would at, would just be stunned and like, what the fuck? And yeah, I could see him. I could see him totally engineering that. <laughs> yeah, and and look, the other the other thing to think about is and and we're going to just learn a lot over the next few days, but if he ends up back to me, that's a sign that he actually really does care about the mission and the economic arrangement because the version Sam does that is not open AI is clean cap table. All right. It'll be a Delaware C core probably. Uh, he owns, you know, Greg and, and, and he, he will own basically all of it. They're going to get insanely good terms. They probably can go get Microsoft or another, you know, big cloud provider because obviously that's a huge bottleneck for these big models. Um, and he can get all the best talent. And so it's like, okay, so yeah, you, you're now maybe behind a year, but like you have completely clean, no, none of this historical baggage. And, and then the other thing just kind of withers on the vine and dies or, or probably ends up being acquired by Microsoft. Although Microsoft doesn't even need to acquire it. I, I think they, they put out a tweet or something that was like, they are completely capable of, of uh, fulfilling the needs they need for AI, which probably means they have access to like the core source code and they, they can kind of just move forward without having the existing shell of a team there or something like that. Some, something equivalent. And they've had to say that because in after market trading, Microsoft has taken a dive of a couple points. And so... Yeah, and a two point seven trillion dollar company. When you go down two percent, it's a fifty billion dollar drop. There's, there's a question as to how hard it is to recreate what uh, OpenAI is built today. I think ChatGPT is like one point six billion ARR or something. Like they, they have a lot that they've and, and that they've built, uh, you know, sort of technologically, but also um, sort of contract wise, um, customer wise, brand wise. And it's an interesting question. If you're Sam Altman, do you um, do you and you have the opportunity to come back? Do you come back or, or, or start anew? And let's say you're, you're able to reshape the board the way you want. I, I would obviously come back. And my, my, I've made a bet that he is going to, to come back. What do, you, what do you guys do if you're Sam? I mean, I, I think you go back if you, if you can fully take control, clean out the traders, et cetera. But I, so one, one thing, that 1.6 billion ARR number, that seems a little off in the sense that, okay, so one, maybe they are generating that much revenue. But the question is, is that actual like, is there a, you know, uh, profitable unit economics there? Or it's like, is it some, is it so, I, I thought they were, I thought they were negative. Somebody's yeah, yeah, like so, back so of the envelope. I, like, don't, yeah. don't, I think what open AI has is it has the concentration of talent and they are the tip of the spear in terms of everyone is chasing them. And I think the dev day, like we, we know a bunch of people who are kind of working on stuff that, you know, kind of like now they're competing with a whole layer of, uh, AI companies on, but the, the biggest thing is that it's, you've got a, a CEO who can raise, I mean, he's the best fundraiser other than Elon, right? It's like you, the, the two best people who can go raise money are the Elon and Sam Altman. And so you have one of the two best. Uh, you obviously have uh, the highest concentration of, of technical talent. Maybe, maybe Google can make an argument there or, or Meta, but for the most part, it's, it's a top three on, on the AI side of things. And that, that, that's the thing. And, and you're moving much faster in the sense that uh, you're, you're, you're out ahead and, and you can just kind of keep running with it. And, th and that, that creates the brand. 
But I don't think any any like corporate is like, oh, okay, great. So Sam is out. He has a new company with all of the good technical talent. You know what? I'm going to stick with with OpenAI. Try try and true. It, it, it's it's not. It's it's too dynamic. The thing we're we're talking about a product that only really launched one year ago. So it's not like there's had, had that much time to build like really deep long term customer relationships. I'm I, I don't know enough about the OpenAI org, but I'd imagine that like the go to market organization there is is pretty limited. It, you know, it's it's pretty nascent, and so you know there is no ability to like throw in a regular like a, you know swap in a, another CEO and have them build it out, and then I think. The last thing is, if it really is an EA coup, then they're, you know, this this kind of like rumored of like, they don't want to do the chat GPT store, you know, the GPT store. And they're like, no, we're focused on AGI. They might be dumb enough to think that Microsoft putting $10 billion worth of cloud credits in is is there for the, the nonprofit mission. It's like, no, like they're there because it was a commercial arrangement. So yeah, I, 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 think, I think OpenAI is toast without Sam. Um, but going back, like Sam, Sam can go recreate OpenAI anywhere else. I think it is easier for him to just take the existing structure and get rid of the, the traders though. It goes back to our exit versus reform, uh, conversation that we, we've been having more broadly. Um, I mean, zooming out, what's your prediction on what actually happened? I'll, I'll give you mine really quick. I, I think there's another shoe to drop. I, I think it's a little bit EA coup on, on the safety stuff. I think there is. And, you know, I'm, I'm friendly with Sam. I'm, I'm friends with the Sam family. Uh, so I'm, I'm rooting for them. But I, I think there is something else that's going to come out, maybe a uh, concern around um, self-dealing in some capacity or even indirect, whether it's this new company or or that he did have ownership via some indirect entity or, or something. You notice that the phrase isn't that he lied. They're not saying he lied. They're saying he wasn't consistently candid. So there was some communication breakdown uh, on, on, on some level that I think is going to come out at some point. Some people think that there was some breakthrough that they'd made and, and that they they haven't released yet and the board doesn't want to say it because it doesn't want to scare the public. I, I don't think that's it. I think there was something. Otherwise, why would they have fired him so quickly um, and so use language that was so aggressive? I, I feel like they have to be hold it sitting on something that they're going to say or they're just it was a coup and they were total amateurs. And that, that's a possibility, too. Um, what, 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 what are your guys' predictions? Like what actually happened? Well, it's somewhat a, f a function of what they knew and whether they discovered this recently or not, and how much of it falls apart, right? If there was self dealing or not, like how much of it was actually hidden from the board, etc. Right. So I'm I'm going to take like again, I, I maybe I'm not like the biggest pro Sama person in the past, but I think I'm definitely in the team Sama sided right now. Same. But just if I was to say one, like you know, I'm, I'm a big Elon fan. <laughs> Elon's got a lot of. Uh, you know, cross pollination. Let's just put it that way. Across cool. all of the public, private, and and he's fine. Like the reality is, is uh, outside of doing something egregious enough that you're going to get like a federal prosecutor to come after you. Um, and even in the case of Elon, he's he's been able to deal with the SEC and pay a fine. The I think really talented people and and people with a lot of like savvy and power are going to be able to kind of like move forward through that. And you'll just have a lot of people grumbling, but you know that's life. Um, I, I think someone smart in one of our, our group chats made the point that we keep thinking this is house of cards and we, we live in Veep. Like, it's just like, there's just a lot of incompetence around. And the, 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 I think the simplest explanation is you have a, a bunch of um, EA fanatics who are on this board. And so whether it's, it's like a big issue or, or it's something that's like, a you know, a molehill made into a mountain, I think, um, I think that seems like the most likely and it's just like they're incompetent they didn't think through like this as a calculated like okay how do we win the pr battle it's just which which is surprising to me because adam d'angelo i think definitely uh has been playing the silicon valley game longer but clearly the other two board members the they're like npcs they're just uh you know token people put on the board to sound good but like they have never they no equity ownership they've never operated a company at scale and, and what's interesting is I think the board used to have like Manod Kosla and Reid Hoffman, like this, you, you had like real operators and, and, and investor types who, who were on the board before, who've been on boards and, and have been in Silicon Valley for a long time. And so now you're, you're talking about a board that um, maybe he just assumed that they wouldn't be conniving at all. And, and, you know, Ilya getting principled around some, you know, AGI fanaticism, that's what you have. 
So if, if you're Adam D'Angelo right now, or if you're on the board, like, do you think there's a chance the board resigns? Uh, someone, you know, that same person in the group chat also said, hey, there's a, it's unlikely that if you're on the board, you'd resign because you expose yourself to legal risk. Um, you, you lose protections of being a board member. Um, and thus, there's just only like real downside for you. Well, so again, we're, we're kind of doing a bunch of like legal and tax stuff, not necessarily uh, expertise, but it's a nonprofit board. There's no fiduciary duty, like from a shareholder value standpoint to a nonprofit. I'm not sure that's the case because the nonprofit owns the for-profit and the for-profit does have fiduciary. I mean, yeah, I don't, we don't know what we're talking, or I don't know what I'm talking about here, but the, some people have told me that it, it's not that simple in the sense that the for-profit has fiduciary duty, the nonprofit owns it, and thus it accumulates some of that. Like there has to be fiduciary duty somewhere, right? So here, here's a basic example. Uber, Travis, right? I don't think I don't think that the other people had board control. I think Travis had control, and it was a they they were able to kind of take advantage of him at a low point and say for the best of the company, and, and then get him to leave. But I think like my understanding of most of these boards is like if you have founder control, like you can you can really um, doesn't matter what the the shareholders think because you 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 have super voting shares, right? Like you 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 represent the majority of the shareholders, so. Like you can have people sue you and, and like Coinbase, for example, Brian has super voting shares and, and there are people suing them and, you know, settlements and stuff like that. But like control of the board is different than like the shareholder value thing. But again, if it's a nonprofit board and so it's like that, that is the, that's the board he gets removed from and, and the, that is the board that's removing him as CEO. Are there shareholders of that nonprofit board? I, I don't, I don't think that that's the case. So I look, I, I think that the more interesting element is like Microsoft can just be like, okay, sorry, the, the cloud credits that we promised you, uh, they're going to be a little delayed and, and, or it's like, oh, we're having a really hard time with our cloud infrastructure. Like GPT five might be delayed. Like, it's just like, there's a lot of like dependencies there and a lot of leverage for the fact that they, the open AI needs Microsoft's infra to actually move progress forward. Right. So it's like Satya can call up Billy and be like, AGI ain't happening, dog. Like we're going to, we're going to slow play you. We're going to sue, sue you. And even though we think we'll potentially even lose in the future, just the fact that you'd be caught up in three years of legal battles, like it, it's over. Like other people are going to get past you. So maybe, maybe that, that is a point of leverage, right? I love how cloud credits are like a material thing. It's like when you start a startup, you know, you get your little 100K cloud credits from like Google and Amazon, like suddenly this is the thing. And it's funny that it's like, it's like water or oil or land and other struggles. But in this case, it's literally pure raw computation that's being withheld. And that's the, that's the burden. Well, it's, it's, it's fascinating, fascinating because this used to obviously be a big crypto thing, right? Like NVIDIA's stock price was, was uh, like, they had to put out a bunch of stuff around crypto mining. And then the fact that Ethereum was getting off and, and that was the primary like crypto that people were using GPUs because can't use GPUs to effectively mine Bitcoin. Um, and then now it, it's just shifted where it's just like, okay, actually raw compute has purposes that can create a lot of value in, you know, kind of, if you, if you go back 10 years or whatever, it's like, everything's in the cloud. The compute is like, yeah, the data centers are important, but, but now the kind of like frontier technologies are actually, it's just like point a bunch of really high-end computers at this thing and, and just let them run, you know, linear algebra or matrix multiplication or whatever it is. Hey, we'll continue our interview in a moment after a word from our sponsors. If you're a startup founder or executive running a growing business, you know that as you scale, your systems break down and the cracks start to show. If this resonates with you, there are three numbers you need to know. 36,000, 25, and one. 36,000, that's the number of businesses which have upgraded to NetSuite by Oracle. NetSuite is the number one cloud financial system, streamline accounting, financial management, inventory, HR, and more. 25. NetSuite turns 25 this year. That's 25 years of helping businesses do more with less, close their books in days, not weeks, and drive down costs. One, because your business is one of a kind, so you get a customized solution for all your KPIs in one efficient system with one source of truth. Manage risk, get reliable forecasts, and improve margins. Everything you need, all in one place. Right now, download NetSuite's popular KPI checklist designed to give you consistently excellent performance absolutely free at netsuite.com slash zen. That's netsuite.com slash zen to get your own KPI checklist. netsuite.com slash zen. 
Dr. Balaji's having dreams of the network state being fueled by compute, kind of like oil in Saudi or like. Well, you know, Balaji's you know. previous company that he sold to Coinbase was originally a, a chip company and data center company to do Bitcoin mining. He has he has like uh, war stories about getting out of like the data center long term lease stuff. Like, <laughs> uh, I, I don't think he's looking to do that ever again, it, it, at least in the model that he did. It's funny, we randomly had a business conversation with something unrelated to this, but the guy's previous startup was building Bitcoin mining rigs for North Dakota and the natural gas runoff from fracking. And so they would pack them into a, a container, put them in the ass end of North Dakota somewhere where it's cold as fuck and they get, I assume, cheap, cheap natural gas. And apparently if Bitcoin's above, I think it was 30K or something like it actually made sense. <laughs> kind of like fracking itself, which above a certain oil price makes sense. And the whole thing just sounded completely wild and fun and insane. And I wish I had done it <laughs> five years ago. <laughs> but yeah. Well, look, they have to flare. They have to, what is it? Flare either the gas or the methane. Yeah, or yeah. And, and yeah, exactly. it just, it just wasted. And because right. they can't turn into electricity and then do the transmission to population centers. So actually turning it in. I, it, it is interesting to think about like, compute as, as a fundamental, okay, you need the actual chips, but then energy is, is the biggest input, uh, both in right. terms of like actually powering it and then keeping it cool. And so kind of like at a certain point where, you know, there is demand for just like the X dollar or X chip of marginal compute, like you start getting all these like weird, weird cases, whether it's cryptocurrency mining or um, AI. Like I've I had a bunch of people pitch me on this idea that like you have all these gaming computers, right? It's like teenagers who are, you know, playing whatever, you know, Call of, Call of Duty or, uh, you know, Counter-Strike and, and it's like they're at school during the day. So it's just like run run the computer with the, the like retail NVIDIA chip. But if you do it as a swarm, like now, now you actually have a cloud. Um, it's like SETI at home, but for... Yeah, like, exactly. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah it, it, you, you go from trying to find alien life to mining cryptocurrency to running models just just to go back to the the same thing though the game that is being played here is is uh capital and and access to compute and i think sam is the best in the world at that like he's proven that in terms of he, he was able to get microsoft to bet its entire ai strategy rather than doing it in house on on open ai um whereas if you look at google obviously google has all of this in house and they can't ship anything and then Amazon, I think, is working with Hugging Face. I don't know if that's like 100% comparable, but um, basically Apple is the only one of the big tech companies that has not kind of like made a bet on a foundational model, at least what we've heard publicly. Um, and we, you know, how bad Siri is. Like, it, it's, it's kind of embarrassing. Like, if you, if you use Open uh, AI's, you know, the ChatGPT app, and if you have like Plus and, and are in the latest, you, you have voice and image recognition. It's insane. Like, it's like actually really, really good. Um, and then you use Siri on the same device and you're just like, how, how is one of these companies, the most valuable company in the world and the other one, a startup. So th let's just, let's just get real here. Let's just make some actual bets instead of all this uh, job owning. What, what is, what are the probabilities or the bet, the betting odds you would take on Sam Altman being back to being CEO of open AI or functionally open AI, everyone who matters at open AI now being at a new entity by say the end of the week, or I don't know, the end of the, I mean, definitely by the end of the quarter. Here's my bet. I think he's going to win. He's, he's a total street fighter. He loves war and combat. Like I've seen it myself. He loves, he's going to run circles. I mean, everyone on the board sounds like either they're a total fucking loser who shouldn't be there, or there's someone who's brilliantly smart, but just doesn't understand the game and is not going to be able to play the chess pieces. And a lot of the forces are aligned on Sam's side. So I'm going to bet, I'm going to definitely take the over on Sam uh, ending up as either the CEO of OpenAI or OpenAI being a shell of itself and most of the talent and Juju being under Sam one way or the other. I'm going to take the over on that. What do you guys think? Yeah, I, I would take below even odds in the sense that like, <laughs> you know, you, I, I would bet a uh, hundred bucks to make 10 on Sam winning in the sense that he either is the CEO of OpenAI or Nuco basically takes all the talent, uh, yeah. Trader S8 style um, and and basically goes and starts new new thing. Now, if you were to like get into, is, is he going to be OpenAI CEO again yeah, that's, that's or Nuco? I think that's a little bit more flip. Like I actually genuinely don't know, but um, the, f the the interesting thing is, so if you take the story yesterday of the like board is thinking about resigning because employees are there, they didn't resign. And so the question is, was that a leaked story? You're dealing with like 
you know, serious operator, right? Was that a leaked story to basically kind of lean on on the negotiation? And that was actually never the case, right? These people were super principled the day before. They just didn't they didn't they didn't panic within 24 hours. I, I think actually they probably are panicking, if I was to guess, just given that they probably haven't operated at this level before. But that that's kind of genius to be able to be like, yeah, they're they're talking to me about come back to being uh, the CEO and they're thinking about resigning. And you get that story out there, right? Like The Verge is reporting it and all these other things. You're, you're kind of manifesting that reality into being true. And now, again, it's kind of pure information warfare. If I'm the average uh, line engineer at OpenAI, now I'm texting other people being like, oh my God, is the board actually resigning? Like, wait, I, I wasn't asked to resign at 5 p.m. in protest of the board. Like, how, how do I sign up for that? So it's actually about kind of like almost like winning the hearts and minds of the actual engineers at OpenAI, which again, make, make or break the, the, the company. I mean, even without, if, assume everyone stays and Sam isn't there, I still think it's probably not going to work out for OpenAI, but in a world where you start to really pull the talent, I think, I think you've won one way or another. I think that OpenAI, even without Sam, I think Sam's going to win. I think OpenAI is going to be okay. Um, but somewhere between okay and great. Like I, I think they're they're not going to like dissolve. I, I think those that advantage that they have is real, and the people who, who is leading OpenAI in your world. I, I, ch- I want to challenge that. Like who who is who is the force of personality that is wheeling that company into the future at a hundred miles an hour? You don't think they could recruit a great CEO with the assets that they have? Who would be up to the task? You, you think that Freeman would say no to being CEO of OpenAI? I mean, or whoever's the, the uh, I, I, like I don't know who's best suited to lead lead OpenAI, but you're sitting on. Some tremendous Nat, Nat like, Friedman, if, if, if you were to ask me, it's like, who, who's the best candidate? Nat Friedman, right? Ex-founder, did it with GitHub, did it within a large organization, good relationship with Microsoft. Sure. But I think Nat probably is happy doing what he's doing right now. But yeah, I, I, I think it's like, it's Uber, but Uber way smaller, right? Like Uber, at least when they were replacing Travis, it, it, it kind of hit massive, massive scale. But this is a company that is, they need to find the, the defining set of things that are their business. And if it is do what they're doing now, but assume you're going to get to chat GPT-5, if you pull out all the good talent, I think it's toast. No way. Yeah. Well, I mean, Sam's superpower is not product or, or technology. It's, it's fundraising and recruiting. And you could argue that at OpenAI, he's already done that. Like he's already raised the money and he's already recruited the amazing team. And... So what, 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 like how big of a loss, it, it, it's a loss if the, the it, basically the real question is how many people go with him? Um, is it, you know, 10, 15, 20 people, or is it like, you know, 20% or 25% of the org? And I, well, we know one yeah, prominent but, tweeter who's definitely going with him, but that's <laughs> neither here nor there. <laughs> but, but Eric, you take the t- top 25 most talented people at OpenAI and OpenAI has plenty of talented people, right? The top 25 most talented people, the thing's done. Like there is no recovering from that. The startups are a result of the founders. And then if you want to yeah. give any you know credit after that, it's it's the core group of people that are kind of completely aligned with the direction the founder is headed in and they're charging ahead at hundred miles an hour. You take that group out. There, there are plenty of people who are opportunistic mercenaries who have shown up at OpenAI Nothing against those people. Like I'm, I'm, you know, hoping the best for them. Like in the sense that they probably were, were thinking about that ninety billion dollar tender offer, and and now it's evaporated at least for right now. But the, those people have no ability to like drive the future forward. Like they, they join after things are de-risked. Like that, that that's the issue. What about Carpathy? Carpathy or Ilya? You know, one of the technical geniuses of the company and and of the world. If, if, if they're put in CEO, I think some people still have confidence in them. I think Carpathy's gone. I think Carpathy goes to the same thing. Really? You, you, yeah. I, I, I think like if they had been around for five years in their position and this was happening, then I could have specifically, hey, they, they built out a go-to-market organization. They have a clear idea on like what makes money. Unit economics are figured out. But all this is, is totally up in the air. Like the, yeah. the crazy thing about open AI is they're just making it up as they go along. Like in terms of they're, they're building the, the, the spaceship while flying. Like the thing is so much a momentum game and, and that's a result of, of the founders. Well, why do you think Sam has that kind of level of pull G- given that he's not a product or tech genius um, and that open AI already has the talent and the money? Why would someone like Carpathy follow Sam? Like what, 
Sam is not like Elon in the sense that he's really in the weeds of, of these products to the same degree. Like what, what do you think is the pull that, that drives these people? What is the superpower? In that? I, I would challenge that. I, I think if, especially if you listen to the Elon biography, like obviously Elon is, is in, incredibly talented that we don't need to say that, but, but actually what Elon is, is he is uh, good at asking questions. First principles that, that seems like Sam um, good at fundraising good at recruiting. Like th that is actually the thing, you know, Steve Jobs was in the technical genius, right? He had, he had taste, but, but really is about like putting the right people in the right place and then actually holding that bar and driving the company forward and saying, this isn't good enough. That, that, but that it's, it's not like, um, I think we so have to kind of like, at that uh, level. Yeah. I, I think at that level, it's the same role in, in each way. And, and, and actually a lot of it is also then how do you market the narrative and the myth externally, right? Like how do you build the brand of SpaceX? But I think so much of it is willingness to work extremely hard and sacrifice a lot, uh, everything. And then it's, it's, you know, ask the right questions, blow away the, the nose, which I think Sam, it's, it sounds like everything I've heard from OpenAI is he's the one that's like, no, like, let's just keep moving, move, 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 move. Yeah. So it's being able to drive that urgency, fundraise and recruit. And he, he's world-class at that, like, you know, top, top five, top three, I don't know. Let's get into Sam's background a bit, because I think there's nobody whose background and reputation, I think, is more uh, challenged than, than Sam's in that there's a set of people, a, a large, you know, and maybe it's generational even, um, who believe, hey, he's he's the Steve Jobs, he's Elon, he's he's at that level. And there's a number of people who think, hey, he's actually like failed up or, or something like that. Um, I, 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 I tend to think it's in fact, closer to the Steve Jobs, Elon, or, or somewhere in, in the middle. But let's just briefly go through his his, his background. So he, he, you know, out of Stanford, uh, he starts this company, Looped. It, I think it's like a photo sharing thing. Uh, it, you know, before Instagram, no, no, loca location. No, no, it was it was it was sort of lo it was a location based thing. Oh, sorry, sorry. Like Foursquare back when location was important. The reason yes, I sorry. know this again, he 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 had another cameo in Chaos Monkeys in which um, uh, YC at the time had this thing called like like a prototype, maybe to prototype the thing. And then you get assigned a mentor. So he was our assigned mentor for a while. And then just get, another read on Sam. He is so crazy intense as a person, even back. He's like a live wire. My co-founders were scared to go to, to him. And so I would have to go on Friday afternoons to looped office and looped. I mean, just to be clear, it was not like a spectacular outcome. Um, right. Um, it was, it was kind of empty. It was an aqua hire fire sale type thing. Yeah. yeah. But, but it, it, but it was a nice aqua hire. Um, I don't think he even went to the acquiring. I don't know. It, it would not be a success by most success standards of people at this level of the game. Um, but you know, but that's true of a lot of YC people whose first sort of at bat wasn't necessarily hitting out of the park and they kind of went on to another thing, right? I mean, you could say the same thing of Gary and a lot of the partners, their, their initial success yeah. was not some massive actually outcome. They, they kind of rolled right. into something else and, you know, and so nothing wrong with that necessarily. But anyhow, he, he was always super intense. Even back then it was amazing. And, yeah. um, yeah, anyhow, sorry, go ahead. Th th yeah. Then he becomes a YC well, partner. Let me, let me, let me take the other... Uh, but hold on, let me, so again, I, I've, I'll be on the record of like, I've never been like the most like pro Sam person, maybe, maybe, you know, not uh, a fan in, in the past, but I think if like, I just step back, a lot of it is probably just jealousy and projection. So one, that's, that's my own issue. And then I think two, if you just, if you just look at Elon, right? Like I, so I like Elon, right? Like mood affiliation, but I think the Elon, like pretty messy departure from PayPal. Um, yeah. Pretty messy Tesla. A coup, another story. coup, another coup. He got a coup. He got booted. Right. So, so like it, time helps, you know, kind of turn these things yeah. into like good, good stories versus people's feeling. And I think you, you nail it, Eric, when you said it's a generational thing. It's like, if I just think about like most people's opinion of Sam, virtually everyone who's been in Silicon Valley that I like, you know, pre 2010 with like a very small number of people that are like more pro Sam. There are a lot of people who, who kind of are not as fun, a fan of Sam or at least privately. And then I think just look at the outpouring support. Like one, there are a whole bunch yeah. of founders who, who are. And then I think two, all of the young people, like they, they, they talk about him like Steve Jobs. Like yeah. I, and it was funny is here, here's the thing. Paul Graham wrote an essay in 2009, five founders I respect. And it's like Larry and Sergey, Steve Jobs. And then he had Sam on there in the fifth one. And I remember reading that at the time and be like, the guy hasn't done anything. But I mean, PG, again, shows that he's right. Like, he, he might have some weird opinions on other things. But the reality is, is like the, the ability for him to identify talent early is just like unparalleled, right? Like, and, and he's putting him there and he's like, Sam's going to get whatever he wants. If he, 
you know, he's got another famous line where it's like, if you drop Sam off on an island of cannibals, he'll be like the leader. So, so, so there clearly is this force of personality that I think very few people in Silicon Valley have, right? And especially in a world where you, you have this like stereotypical like engineer founder who's kind of like Aspie and has no ability to like kind of like really connect with people or, or like understand like the messy people dynamics. And it's like Sam, Sam clearly understands that. And, and like, you, you know, you, maybe you should give the, the profile is then, you know, he was running YC. Like he, he's like the ultimate like Silicon Valley networker in the sense that he knows everybody and everybody knows him. Yeah. So, okay. So he becomes partner at, at YC. He also raises, I think, a $20 million fund that Peter Thiel um, seeds. He, he, he reportedly had like 2% of Airbnb or two or, or Stripe or something. Like, so he made a lot of money as a, as an early stage um, investor on the side at, at, from, from YC. At some point, Paul, Paul Graham decides to retire, crowns him as the successor at, at, at YC. And, um, and then Sam decides to run the business in a very different way. People had said that Paul Graham had run it like a family office or family business or something, i.e., you know, gave it a lot of love and support, but didn't really uh, professionalize it or, or take it that seriously as a as a business. And Sam decides to do the opposite and expand significantly, launch all of these new programs, YC Research, YC Cities, YC Fellowship, a ton of uh, in innovation at, at YC. A lot of it didn't stick, but the thing that did stick is increased class sizes. Um, and I, I think a lot of people feel that, that that's when YC lost their way. When they try to do too much, I, I feel differently. I, I think a lot of the best batches are, are in uh, when when Sam was there. I, I look at the 2016 batch. I did Scale AI, Lattice, Rappy. Lattice is Jack Altman, Sam's brother. And and, and they're in the, the Sam batch. So I, I think YC uh, sort of really built their moat uh, under, or, or, or compounded their moat under Sam. But a lot of people feel, hey, that's when things start to get haywire and when YC lost their soul. Um, Sam ends up leaving YC. And even what, during Sam, you mentioned he's an incredible networker. He incubated other stuff at, at the open AI was, was an example. He, he, he continued to invest significantly. This is where, uh, you know, uh, Helia, Helion, what's it called? The other, there's, there's a number of different initiatives. The few, the that Sam startup. Hold yeah. on. But, yeah, but like, you, just, you just said something like, lost their soul why see a for-profit vc company like there's no soul it's just like this is a capitalism dog. oh like, come like on no there's a vibe come on it definitely did change between pg and i wouldn't characterize it as a family i mean pg took it very seriously i i always say it was run like the school of socrates in athens or something where pg was like the socrates and there was like the people around him it was it was informal i was in a batch of 35 companies and it seemed it was at the limit of dunbar's number like i didn't actually know it, literally everybody in the batch and it felt very big. And then I remember I'd go to the demo days and I'd, some demo day had over 200 companies. It was insane. And then they they cohorted it such that this set of companies was in a silo with this partner. I don't know. Not everybody loved it, but it was definitely a change of vibe. Like PG and, and Sam are, I think both would agree, very different people, right? PG is this sort of avuncular philosophical presence. Sam is like this, you know, fucking live wire of intensity it's just it's a very different vibe it's, it's things change at YC not necessarily for the worse but I think like so again I, I feel like I, I don't know how I'm in the world where I'm like defending everything Sam does but like I, I'm, I'm I've been maybe reflecting a little bit of like okay like what are the things that in the past maybe I was like not as much of a fan of but I think part of it is also just Silicon Valley changed right like social network came out like all of a sudden doing a startup was not contrarian like it was actually a like the type of person who would have gone to Harvard Business School or Stanford Business School before is now trying to get into YC because that's the credential and that's the sign that like I'm a you know XYC founder or whatever and and I think yes you you increase the size it actually further compounds that but I think the reality is it, at a certain point YC actually all that startup advice was now all over the internet right like Sam actually did the startup course right so you had Peter do the startup course at Stanford that turned into zero to one Sam actually did it and he put it all online and I remember watching it at the time being like this is awesome. Like I'm, I'm not even in YC, but I'm like, you know, getting all this like really good material. You can go rewatch those videos and they actually have like some pretty epic people. They have that guy, um, uh, Antonio, you'd know him, the, the, the crazy growth guy from Facebook, Alex. Oh, uh, Alex Schultz. Yeah. 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 And he like, He's crazy. Through, yeah. he does this like growth <laughs> presentation that was amazing. And so Sam would like put all that stuff together. And so I, I think like Silicon Valley changed and, and then you had zero interest rates and all this other kind of stuff. 
And I also think, again, to just use Elon as the foil here, because it's, it's interesting is that these guys are now on the other side of the coin, despite having started OpenAI together, um, uh, in a way that is kind of like Elon has his rivalry with Bezos. But I, I think in some ways, Elon has very much won that rivalry, at least in the arena. I think Bezos is kind of like, OK, whatever, I'm, I'm you know, with my new wife or fiance or whatever. Um, but I think with Sam, he's very much in, in the arena and, and it actually actively competing in a variety of different areas. Elon, Elon's think about how many companies Elon's launched Neuralink, uh, boring company, yeah. like all, all these things, open AI and, and everyone's always criticizing him. It's like, what well, you're doing too much. Like you're doing Twitter, like you can't handle that. And I think it's, it's the personality type, right? It's like when you get one of these people who is, is actually a true apex predator in Silicon Valley, they are able to do all this stuff despite everyone telling you you can't do it right contrast like sam and elon to jack dorsey right who who was at one point running twitter and Squ like you know again generational founder and that two extremely successful like companies both went public like so you know jack gets credit there but i don't think anyone's like being like oh man like elon sam and jack dorsey it's like no it's like the game is pretty limited to like those two yeah, I mean, but there's a difference here in the fan in our little founder fantasy football league thing that we're coming up with. There's a, there's a subtle difference, right? I mean, for starters, Jack Dorsey actually created the Twitter idea as this random whimsical idea, right? Like he had lots of whimsical. I'm literally a block away from the building Twitter used to be in, and I don't know if you know the history, but you know he's part of this uh, obvious corporation business with Ev, and there was all these ridiculous hipster ideas. They had like a room that would just play like Coldplay or something. I don't, they had all this insane, stupid shit from the mid-aughts. And one of them was like, oh, I'm going to do this thing that I tweet a thing. Because remember, there wasn't smartphones. So you had to DM it. He created it, right? You know, I, I mean, Elon's a genius, but he, he didn't actually found Tesla, right? Travis didn't found Uber, actually, right? These are people who were brought in later and took the initial whimsical idea and made it be this massive home run, right? I think but you, there's a subtle difference there between whimsical, crazy guy who does weird shit and creates this weird cocktail of shit that actually has huge promise. And then there's like the hard driving semi egomaniacal sociopath guy who makes it enormous right and I, I think those are those seem like different people to me somehow that, that, that's fair but I, I would say like we put way more I think media tends to cover way more about the the idea the inventor the yeah the, the genius and the reality is we we know like the actual fucking grind is that that is the the hard part like more than anything else and so and and I think in the case of Elon I, I would give him credit as he he to do SpaceX. Like there are, there is no controversy in who started SpaceX. <laughs> like, and, and, you know, watching Starship, I mean, how, how, how ironic is it to have like the EA revolt, if, if that's the actual case, the day before Starship, you know, goes on its second flight and it's just, you know, accelerate, you know, everything. Right. Um, but yeah, I, 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 I hear your point in the sense that like, I think the, you need both to just be extraordinary. And, and I think in the case of uh, Sam and Elon, they, they definitely have that extraordinary founder ability to operate in the same way that I think Steve Jobs, you know, was able to do it with Apple, um, is, is, you know, have that, that drive to just kind of greatness. Even though Woz, Wozniak, Wozniak though was a technical genius to be clear. Right. I mean, that, again, you see the difference right there. Wozniak and Jobs, they were kind of, they almost embodied that duality actually. In 2017, 2018, people weren't putting Sam at the same level as Jack Dorsey. Like he was still, you know, b behind, um, even though he was a startup icon because of YC, he wasn't a proven entrepreneur in, in the same way that someone like a Jack Dorsey was. Um, and it was really open AI that it was really, I mean, even Ch when ChatGPT came out, some someone had tweeted like, hey, the Paul G um, prophecy has been fulfilled. Like he'd really then entered the lexicon in people's minds of like, okay, this guy is the level of jobs in Elon. I, I will give him... Um, I, I think he is the most ambitious person in the world. Um, and I also think that he is the best um, talent scout or best talent cultivator. Um, you know, we, we also mentioned WorldCoin uh, or, or didn't yet mention WorldCoin, a, a project he started with a very talented CEO. Um, I was just with uh, uh, one of the investors yesterday. He talked about how he, he, he thinks the CEO is one of the more talented CEOs he's, he's worked with. And Sam discovered him very early. Um, there's a CEO in my portfolio who Sam tried to recruit like, seven years ago, I think it's one of the best CEOs in my portfolio to to lead one of his projects. And the CEO was like 23 or 22 at the time. I, I think he has a knack for just discovering really young people who are going to be amazing and then putting them as as CEOs or, or leaders of, of, of his projects. 
Um, and that's that's typically a thing that most people fail at is incubating things in very difficult um, sort of uh, spaces, you know, that require technological innovation. But he's able to pick the right space, get the right CEO, and and raise the money. Um, so I, I suspect he will be an Elon like like figure. Um, and people are saying he's going to do a TSMC competitor. People, you know, the thing with Johnny Ive to to build a phone. Like I I think I I don't even know if Elon is more ambitious. Like I think he's at that level of of ambition and maybe of talent um, talent discovery. So let's let's make sure we we split that though. There's the ambition, which I probably agree with you, but the the delivery on the ambition. There's only one who who's actually done it at that level across multiple things, right? So it's like, yeah. yeah, you have the founders, like you have Bezos who's done it within Amazon, right? And 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 within the business units of Amazon and, and things like that. But there is only one Elon with SpaceX, Tesla, X, you know, Zip two or whatever. Plus now Neuralink, like. People are sleeping on Neuralink. They got an FDA approval. Like you talk to any investor who, who's in Neuralink, it's, they're over the moon. They're like, this is an insanely hard thing. And they can actually now go put this device in, in humans. And so it's like, and and he just went and bought Twitter with his own money. Like is someone someone's operating on a completely different level than everybody else. That said, I think to just give credit, like Sam is one of the few people who can even contemplate like yes. playing the game at that level. And, and, and have anyone who, who kind of like, observes these people with like a intellectually honest way of saying, yeah, I, I actually think he, he could get there. Right. I mean, it's worth commenting. Hey, that Sam, Eric, can, I, can I just, tro- Eric, I just, can I just troll you for low key mentioning your portfolio and just letting that slip into the conversation? That was, yeah, that, that was, was pretty, that was pretty douche tactic. That was, <laughs> it, that was a little douche tastic. My little douche alarm. Just, <laughs> I'm the, you know, what, and you Tony, I think we need to just talk about web three attribution and decentralized <laughs> yeah. to like really balance out. Uh, Actually, you know, I was just, I was just, I was just wondering about view three attribution in the context of on-chain uh, measurement. And it's something that I spent most of my morning on. So I'd be happy to switch to that topic. If you'd like. Really is quite fascinating. As a matter of fact, I apologize for Jay Cowling this pot for, for Calicanising this, this podcast. <laughs> you're, uh, you're raising, a venture fund through the weird exception that allows a dentist in Indiana to also <laughs> invest. So if you're a dentist in Indiana listening to MOZ, talk to Eric. Yeah, exactly. Um, the um, w- one thing I also think is worth mentioning. Well, yeah. So Sam's also 15 years younger than Elon. Um, so you know he, he he's got time. I, he's uh, getting old though. Sam's old. He's almost my age. He's almost an old. He's practically <laughs> geriatric by Silicon Valley standards, right? No. One thing that's been fascinating, of course, is that a lot of the best alpha on this has just been in group chats. Um, and, you know, it's, it's just fascinating. Every time there's a uh, sort of a moment where everyone's trying to understand what, what's happening, people are, you know, it, it all goes down in the group chats. Just another. Uh, well, it's, it's classic. The journos aren't in, in the, the good group chats, right? It's like they've already been cut out. Like journos canceling people as a result of like, you know, whatever they did in the, the 2015 to 2020 era moved all the alpha off of anything close to public. Not that it was necessarily that uh, public before, but now people are completely locked down on that. And so anything that journalists are reporting is a calculated thing that someone is trying to use the media as kind of like a like a munition for whatever they're doing. Like there is no, the, the journals know, but, so it's like, if you're listening to this and be like, ah, oh, I'm not in a group chat where people are doing it. The journals basically know as much as you, maybe one step more. And it's like, like, I, hell, our group chats didn't actually know anything. Like, I didn't get a single credible, like, oh, here's the inside scoop. So this, this, this like, thing has been pretty tight in terms of, like, you had to be in the SAMA, like, very close orbit or the, the kind of, you know, board, which, again, it's, like, Adam D'Angelo and Ilya. I don't think of those other NPCs as, like, actually relevant from a Silicon Valley standpoint. So th- th- this itself is, is actually pretty contained. But, yeah, like, I, I think people at least feel free to speak their mind about you know the, the main characters involved here and, and and not worry about it because obviously doing it on Twitter or a podcast uh, too publicly you know it can always come back to bite you. That's a good point though. There's there's no scoops anymore. There's only press releases, right? There's there, there's no there's no there's no. I mean, Cara, like oh scoop you didn't scoop anything. You got three DMs from four people who were in like five different group chats. None of whom, all of whom hate you, by the way, and like shit on you in those group chats. And then they leaked you a thing, and you kind of parse it into a story, and you're kind of drafting off your glory from 10 years ago. And it's like, it's like a whole show and everyone seems to be in on the joke except themselves. But anyhow, um, it doesn't matter. But it's just, it's interesting to see that dynamic play out. That that's, uh, yeah, you're, yeah. you're an external press secretary. You're not, you're not right. actually breaking anything. Like it's <laughs> just like, okay, here's the press release. Thanks. But I make it, make it seem like you did some reporting. Like, no, that is absolutely not. Like there, there is no alpha 
Those people have right. all been cut out of, of the good stuff. Right. Right. It's like the presidential spokesperson, whoever that, whoever that person is worth. They're on threads. Yeah. But still yeah they're on threads. Better. Yeah. Yeah. They're on threads. You're X being... is dying. X is dying, but the whole, this, this whole drama is playing out on X, but X is dying. <laughs> she doubled down on it. She was like, someone was like, oh, Kara reports it on X. That means X is back. And she goes wrong. <laughs> um, uh, let's, you're, Dan, you're too humble. I, I think we had some alpha in, in the group chats. Um, but uh, let, let, let's. Uh, no, the, the, the most alpha we had in a group chat was the person who said, y'all think this is House of Cards. We live in beep. <laughs> <laughs> the, um, let, 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 let's wrap on that. Um, and yeah, we'll, uh, we'll hopefully we'll find out what happens next week. Um, Dan Antonio, always uh, until next time. See you.